I speak with Jurgen Klinsmann, the German-born head coach, taking American soccer to new heights only in the game 365. Just don't settle. Just always drive for the next possible level. In the United States, many cannot imagine any spectacle bigger than a Super Bowl. But if you move past U.S. borders, a tournament with true international implications demands the world's attention every four years. Playing in the World Cup, what is that like? You know, it's something that you're waiting four years for, and you want to measure yourself with the best in the world. And in soccer, that is the fascinating part. It's the global sport. You know, the best in the world are in South America and in Europe in our sport. And so you want to show them that how good you are. Playing a World Cup like this one now in Brazil at the location of the five-time world champion, so the, the biggest team you know, in the world anyway, is something that will never come back to you again. Mm -hmm. So all we tell our players is, you know, Take this moment, take it all in, you know, it's not coming back in your lifetime anymore. Stay on him. Good, good. Jurgen Klinsmann, the head coach of the United States men's national soccer team, knows of what he speaks. Although he now lives in California with his American wife, Klinsmann was born in Germany and he both played for and managed their storied men's national soccer team. Our picture in Europe definitely, you know, 20, 30 years ago was uh, that it's a sport that is growing, a sport that uh, is behind the other big ones, um, is fighting for recognition. They're definitely a sport that hasn't made it yet. That's how we always looked at it from a European perspective. Now? Now I think uh, a lot uh, has changed in the United States with soccer. You have a professional league that is almost 20 years old, very stable, very uh, getting better you know, quality-wise every year having big owners um, build soccer-specific stadiums all over the country. You see um, a game growing uh, at a very fast pace that still hasn't found its own identity yet. What do your friends and family think of you coaching the United States? They're looking at me a little bit, what is he doing there with the United States, you know? <laughs> I mean, they understand my family is more American than German, and they respect that all, but now it, it uh, unfortunately it happens that we're going to play Germany in this World Cup in the group stage. And so there are a lot of people in Germany kind of now wondering, what is he doing now with this American team? Is he giving us trouble? Is he, <laughs> uh, but that's the beauty of, of sports, you know? You want to measure yourself in special moments, and there's definitely a big special moment coming up. How important is it that you have the players' credentials? It's probably different with every player, how they, uh, they look at you as a coach. You know, I think for some players, it's, it's helpful. It's helpful that they know that, you know, he played in World Cups, you know, he won one, you know, he played for big clubs in, in, in Europe. Um, so that in terms of credibility, yes, it helps you. Some players, maybe not. Maybe they look at you differently. You know, they want to have, see you as a coach in a different way, not based on what you did before in the game as, as a player. I, I think for, um, for a coach, it's definitely a, a nice to have, that you had a previous career, um, that you went through certain moments, good and bad, as a player yourself. So you, you, you lived it. And, and uh, um, that can only help you also for your coaching career. Jurgen's on-field resume is nothing short of impressive. A professional at age 16, teams on which he played won two UEFA Cups, one European Championship and one World Cup. And Jurgen put the ball in the net at an impressive rate of around once every two matches for much of his career. I know in the United States, if you hit a home run, that's a macho thing. Score a touchdown, macho thing. What about scoring a goal? in Europe in front of all those people? Well, I, I think, you know, soccer is uh, certainly on the male side is a macho game as well. So you take it all in. You know, you score goals in big stadiums. You know, it's similar to American football, you know, baseball, you home run or a touchdown or whatever it is. Uh, those are similar moments. Those are moments that you that you live for, you know, and, and, and you dream about as a, as a kid when you, you know, kick the ball around, you know, wherever neighborhood you are in. So kind of multiplying that in a World Cup is this is the time to do it then. You know, this is the time to step it up. 
in a, in a World Cup, you know, many, many different things kind of happen at the same time. Uh, not only you need to be in a good team in order to get chances to score, um, this, need, this team needs to be really uh, on top of it. Also chemistry-wise, it needs to have to believe. Psychologically, meaning mentally, you need to be right there. You don't need to, if you are intimidated by, you know, Brazil or Germany or Spain, then don't even go there. Um, so it's a lot about the moment. And uh, if you have then the chance to score in that World Cup and you do it, then enjoy that moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a, you scored a lot of goals. As I'm sure as a coach, you tell the players that that real good pass is just as exciting. But as a player, is it? Or is the goal the most exciting? I think the goal is always the most exciting moment, but also the recognition for whoever played that ball, ball through, because otherwise you wouldn't have scored. You know? So I think that builds then the team chemistry, that uh, you know, there's a chemistry of appreciation. You know, everybody knows how important the other one is. Um, this is what you want to see then. You want to see a team that is there for each other. Building a consistent contender. That's next on The Game 365. In a coaching and playing career that touched down in four different countries prior to being appointed the head coach of the United States soccer team, Jurgen Klinsmann has faced a wide variety of challenges, but none quite like this. And the United States is saying, take us to the next level. How difficult is that? I don't know how difficult it is. It is definitely a challenge, um, but it's a wonderful challenge because it's something that you can still build. It's not uh, built yet, so the house is not built yet. You know, you can still work a lot on the foundation of the sport, and you can help it to to get to another level in, in all sorts of areas. If it's coaches' education, if it's player development, if it's working with the professional league, um, if it's working with individually with the players. You know, obviously the national team, the senior national team itself, is like the all-star team. It is a little locomotive of the game. So you need to have a very successful national team program that goes to a World Cup and does well, hopefully, in a World Cup, in order to inspire the next generation of young players. So. Um, the fascinating part for me is that there's still a lot to be done, there's still a lot to, to change, there's a lot of, of, of areas where you have the feeling you can improve. Meanwhile, you work you know, in Germany or in Brazil or in Spain, you know, these powerhouses of soccer around the world, pretty much 95% of the thing is already there. So you work always on the last 5%. Here, I think my percentage of work is a little bit bigger. You played handball as a kid, as a little guy, and once you saw this soccer ball, you fell in love with it. How do you get the next generation to feel the same way in the United States? It happens in all sports, you know, they get inspired by what they see on TV, you know, what they like, they try it out, if it's baseball, basketball, football, hockey, or if it's soccer, um, and they will make their own choices. It happened to me that I tried out other sports and, and I got stuck with, with soccer and, uh, uh, until today. And so the decision at the end of the day will be made by the kid. And I hope that, you know, a lot of a lot more kids coming through the ranks in the United States uh, loving that sport. There may be a better pool of talent to pull from in the future, but for now, Jurgen can only work with what he has. And though Klinsman's players are subject to FIFA eligibility rules, his fellow coaches don't have those same restrictions. You made a lot of changes. For example, coaches you brought in. Tell us about that. Well, um, a coaching staff or an environment of a, of, of a soccer team always reflects, obviously, the team itself. Uh, and that means now, in American terms, you know, you know, you have players from Europe, you have players from South America, from Mexico, from the U.S., obviously, and you melt, you melt that. So you're a melting pot. You know, I think soccer, more than any other sport in the world, because it's a global sport. Um, reflects to what's going on in the world. Um, so our coaching staff, I have an assistant coach is Austrian, assistant coach is Mexican, I have a fitness coach is Japanese, you know, and we're very, very diverse, And, and uh, so, but we reflect our team, you know, because our team is diverse, yeah? And our 
kind of source of information is global. You know, I need to know what's going on in Spain. I travel down to Brazil or Argentina to understand their coaching methods and stuff. So it's not domestically driven. Um, yes, do I want to know what's going on in the US? Yes, I, I, I want to, but, but I always have to look outside um, the country. And this is how, you know, the people that you're working with, they reflect that as well. You mentioned uh, taking from this coach and this coach. You also studied coaches and managers here in the United States. Did you take anything from a Phil Jackson, people like that? Well, I think there are so many huge personalities in the American sports landscape that you can learn a tremendous amount. I mean, you mentioned just one name, Phil Jackson. I just had a chance to see just a few hours of his work at the Lakers or, or Mike D'Antoni or, you know, Pete Carroll or I went to Coach K's, you know, seminar, business seminar to Duke. And there's so much knowledge um, in sports here in the United States. It's, it's crazy, you know, it's for us Europeans, it's, it's unheard of what happens in your university system, you know, how big sports is in the universities. It's not, it's not our way. For me then, understanding all that dynamic here in the United States that you go through your educational system, you go through your school, into a college, and then to in the pro game, uh, was very, very new. I, it took me years to understand that, but the knowledge that you have, you know, in all the different sports that, that you have in the United States is just unbelievable. And if you get a chance maybe to spend a couple of hours with those, those personalities, then I, I take it all in. The new normal. That's next on The Game 365. Jurgen Klinsmann managed the German national team to a celebrated third-place finish in the 2006 World Cup. But before that year's success, he was often criticized for splitting his time between Germany and the United States, where he moved to be with his family after retiring from playing. You seem to live 24-7 soccer. Is it all year, or is it easy for you to take an emotional or an intellectual break from it, or does it go with you on vacation? It's always with me. Uh, I just love the sport and, and I love the game, but I also can kind of switch it off. You know, every day I can switch it off. It's not that it, I'm going to bed with it. <laughs> uh, but when you grow through that system and the soccer system in a certain way is all year long. It's when you I played, I don't know, 18, 19 years as a professional and, and the season is 11, 11 and a half months long. So it's just part of your life. You know, you can't, uh, uh, deny it and when you go on vacation and maybe on a beach and you see a soccer ball you want to play <laughs> but you're on vacation right you should actually lie on the pool and have a good time no no i'd rather go and kick the ball around on the beach it seems like the sports now in the united states have gone there where i know i hate to say it's when i played we, we we took it seriously but today the coaches are younger they got more energy 24 7 what's it mean to you well, it means to me that you dedicate yourself to, to your profession, to what you're doing, you know, and it's, it's a job, you know, being a professional athlete, being a professional soccer player now in our case is a, um, is a sport that requires, you know, to be on top of yourself, um, not only on the field, when you train, when you play, but especially off the field. You know, I think when we played uh, um, decades ago, it was much easier. We could focus on the, on the stuff that happens really on the field. Then you left the training field and you went wherever you wanted to go for lunch or dinner and you did whatever you wanted to do in the evening or, or you know, and people didn't take notice of that. Now the athlete today, you know, after wherever he goes for lunch or dinner, or if he goes in a bar at night or whatever, has a couple of beers more, uh, it's all noticed. You know, it's, it's right away on social media, it's, it's exploding wherever, you know, their commercial partners take notice of it and say you can't do that because our image is involved in it. It's much more difficult for the athletes nowadays than it was 20, 30 years ago. Off the field, life is certainly more complicated for players these days. But when his team competes, Jurgen makes sure that their collective mission is clear. This is better. This is better. How demanding are you as a coach? 
I, I think we coaches, we have to be demanding. I mean, uh, I want the player to get the, everything out of himself. You know, I don't want a player that, you know, is all right with being at 70, 80 percent. Maybe he's the most talented player that you have and he, he just decides, you know what, but I don't want to give those extra 20 percent hoods too much. Um, I have a problem with that type of approach because, you know, I'm not asking now, do, do you, you're the perfect player, you, you are, you know, the the most technically gifted player, but I'm asking that you give everything you have for the team environment. Because it's not an individual sport at the end of the day. You know, if you're a tennis player and you only give 80 percent, uh, well then lose your semi-final game and you're fine with it because you still get a good amount of money for the semi-final Grand Slam tournament. <laughs> <laughs> but in soccer, if I see a player just giving me 70, 80 percent because he thinks I'm better than the other guys anyway, you know, over time, he has a problem with me. Over time, I'm not taking that. And I think that's important for a team environment that they see coaches that even are willed at the end of the day to cut somebody out that uh, is just not giving everything. You've talked to him and he's still given 70%. Is he on a team? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. Yeah. You give 100%. Do you treat the star player the same as, you know, the, the supporting player? Overall, you want to treat them always with respect and, and with, the, with the right language. And you don't want to kind of over-treat somebody and leave somebody on the side. But I, I think it's important that even that special player knows, you know, where his next level is. You know, now with our team in the United States, you know, we do not have Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo or Mesut Özil, you know, the, the top players or Iniesta, the top soccer players in the world, you know. None of our players uh, is is on that level uh, and uh, so what I'm trying to tell them even if they're special to us is there's another level waiting for you yeah. you know go for that one I mean play try to play in the Champions League team overseas you know at Real Madrid Manchester United Barcelona or Bayern Munich you know cause that's where well you know that's the Yankees world of uh, of soccer you that's know funny. and that's that's what what you want to see and and I think the players look at me and um, at the end of the day they have to admit you know he's kind of you know, <laughs> He's been there, so he, he did that. So, so what I want them to understand is that, you know, drive for the maximum in your time uh, as a professional athlete. You know, you have 10, 12, 14 years. Um, if you're lucky, hopefully, God forbid, you're not getting injured. Um, but get the maximum out of your career, you know, and, and don't settle now because you get decent amount of money, you get, you know, recognition from your environment, you maybe have 500,000 people on your Twitter side, or <laughs> whatever it is, you know. Just don't settle, just always drive for the next possible level. Breaking through, that's next on The Game 365. Among many high points during Jurgen Klinsmann's tenure, the United States notched its only win against four-time World Cup champion Italy and its first ever victory over arch-rival Mexico on Mexican soil. The squad also set new highs for winning percentage in both 2012 and 2013. Despite this, not many American players have succeeded at the highest levels abroad and some have been accused of settling for a lesser challenge in the name of better money back home. Pit Dempsey a chance to tie it up, he's done it! Do all your players love the sport? I think so, yeah. I think uh, deep inside, definitely. I mean, later on, once you become a professional, as you were yourself, you know, uh, there are many other things to it. There's a lot of money around the game, you know, there's a lot of prestige, there's a lot of commercial interest. So other things will drive it as well, you know, but deep inside, you've got to love it because uh, when you measure yourself with the best athletes and the best players in the world, you've got to have a, a lot of inner drive, you know, otherwise, you know, they tell you after 10 minutes, you're not good enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you want to stay up on top, uh, at the end of the day, you've got to love it. And once you're on the field, I don't think that you think about money anymore, you don't think about your your Twitter, Facebook account anymore. I think that you really think about how can I win this game? How can I get the most out of it? It's so complex today. Can a coach come over or a coach be here any place in soccer and have 
a simple approach because it sounds extremely complex, especially more than one language. I think so, absolutely, because if he has a, a team that adjusts to him then, to that specific type of uh, a coach, and is okay with it, then absolutely it can work. You know, because uh, uh, what you don't want to do is, you know, you don't want to adjust too much to the players' wishes or demands or what they expect from you. At the end of the day, it's a players' driven sport, so they need to have, you know, the gut and they need to have the inner drive to get the maximum out of themselves as well. So, you know, I, I rather prefer the way that the player says, you know what, no matter who my coach is, you know, I'm going to get the best out of myself anyway, you know, and uh, I was very lucky at about 18 to 20 coaches through my professional career and from every one of them I learned something. Were, was there the perfect one? No. You know, and there were big names. I mean, I have big coaches, but um, there's no perfect coach and so there's no perfect player. So you want to rather have the player adjust, you know, a bit to the coach than the other way around. David Sean, David Sean. Yes, Kyle. Yes, yes Kyle. Come on, Mix. Stay on him. The United States men's national team hopes its future will be paved with gold. Shot! Goal, Michael Bradley! And perhaps fittingly for a nation built by immigrants, German transplant Jürgen Klinsmann is in a position to make that happen. For the kids out there, you mentioned some of the big names, superstars in soccer, and you said it's another level. How does the kid who's watching this, who loves soccer, get to that level? Oh. as a star well I, I think the beauty on soccer and i think in most other sports as well the more you play the better you get so you decide it you know if you want to bang the ball around three four hours a day you will get a damn good soccer player similar like the, a baseball kid or a hockey kid um and uh, um, and then obviously it depends a lot on your environment where you grow up you know how you get brought through the system but but uh, um, I think that in the future time will be big, big names coming from the United States and, and the world of soccer.